Welcome back. It's still a breakfast on Plus TV Africa's cause of applicants seeking to register uh, for the permanent voter card. Uh, the PVCs on Sunday besieged the Heineck, Heineck headquarters in Lagos in a last minute rush to beat the July 31 deadline. Now, the news agency of Nigeria reports that the continuous uh, voter registration exercise which started on June 28, 2021 was initially a bill to end on June 30 before it was extended uh, to July 31. And their correspondent who monitored the closing observed that many applicants were still struggling to get registered to vote in the forthcoming 2023 elections. And many of them uh, defied all odds and continued to wait till night last night to get registered. As at 7 p.m., uh, many of the applicants were still waiting to be attended to uh, the INEC office in Lagos. And this, of course, mirrors and, uh, uh, the situation across different parts of the country. The Independent National Electoral Commission said earlier on Saturday uh, that there would be no further extension so as to enable the commission carry out other functions ahead of the 2023 uh, general elections. Uh, for persons, also the commission said for persons uh, captured in the ongoing continuous voter registration, the CVR, the permanent voter cards will be ready in October and November of 2022. Now, a Nigerian satisfied with the process so far, is there a need for further extension of this exercise? There are many questions still being asked. And uh, to help us answer these and other questions, I'm glad to say we're joined by Public Affairs Analyst Professor Sunny Fage. Professor Fage, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, would, will you describe the, the continuous voter registration exercise so far by INEC from what you've seen as a, a relatively successful? Um, yes, it is relatively successful uh, in the sense that um, uh, many people have been able to register. But uh, as far as uh, democracy is concerned, I think there is uh, much room for improvement because uh, democracy is about people. And many people have not registered as yet. Uh, and I think uh, like what you showed in Lagos, those who are on queue uh, for the sake of fairness, those who uh, could have been registered. And since it is an ongoing uh, process, uh, I think the commission uh, should have extended the period in order to uh, get uh, more voters, give, to give them uh, more chance to uh, register. Because part of the reason, I think, is that there is no uh, serious public awareness campaign uh, on the part of INEC, on the part of government, and above all, on the part of political parties. So that is why many people, you know, were a little bit reluctant to come out. Uh, and, uh, but of course, we have to look at from also the side of INEC. They need time uh, to do it. So I think uh, since there is still uh, time uh, to the election and by the, according to the law, uh, the, register, the, the whole thing will, stay, uh, will end 90 days before the election. I think they could have extended it for by another week or two in order to get the people uh, to register. Uh, th th this ongoing uh, voter registration exercise has been, uh, you know, bedeviled with uh, one or two incidents. Uh, for instance, in Lagos, you have uh, allegations and accusations of. Um, uh, uh, thugs disrupting the process in areas and the parts of Lagos State where uh, you have uh, predominantly people who are non-indigents uh, residing or having businesses. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, you see a bit of a, a change in approach by those who, who are enemies of democracy, seeing that they cannot rig the elections, looking for ways to scare people away. You see, these this this are part of the, some of the challenges and some of the problems we have here in Nigeria, where people know that um, people from the opposition uh, who are likely to go for the opposition uh, are, you know, disenfranchised by fellow citizen. So I think what uh, should have been done is for the securities to take uh, serious 
uh, measures on it. Okay, you just don't allow INEC to go with that. You need to ensure the security of the place. Because after all, every Nigerian is entitled. You know, that is part of our constitutional right. You can't disenfranchise me just because you think I will vote for uh, an opposition party or a different party from your own. So if uh, care is not taken, this is going to mar the whole process and this is going to uh, cost us a lot because it seems we have not learned any lesson from what happened in the First Republic, from what happened in the Second Republic, and to what, uh, from what happened in the aborted Third Republic. These are some of the issues that give rise to the political crisis uh, in those republics, and which led to the collapse of the republic. So I think politicians should be mindful of that too, that there has to be Nigeria before they can rule or before they can get office. So I think they should allow uh, people to register and uh, uh, we just don't wait on hope. We should take measures to ensure that whoever is uh, capable, uh, found guilty of anything, should be dealt with according to the laws of the land. Uh, you, I, I do not know if the people still at the INEC office this morning as we speak because of the crowd there in Lagos, for instance, was uh, quite, quite huge. Um, some also reports, so we have reports of chaos in different parts of uh, the country. Even before this deadline, before the last deadline uh, uh, that was there, before the extension, we had uh, reports of chaos in some centers, uh, in uncontrollable crowds, people turning up in their huge numbers. Uh, would you say INEC has, has been overwhelmed you know, with the uh, turnout of people seeking to get registered? I mean, we see huge crowds in the last uh, four to eight weeks. Yes, I think it's uh, overwhelmed. Uh, you know, uh, we have to look at it from their own angle too, that uh, when the exercise was going on, some of the staff would go and stay in the office for hours or even for days. Very few people will turn out uh, for the exercise. Now that the deadline has approached, many people rush in. So I think I know at that time oh, ought to have, you know, uh, you know, why didn't the exercise, I mean, the, the offices, they have more staff, you know, toward the end, they could have increased more computers, more staff in order to accommodate the people. But they went on with um, uh, the way as usual, that uh, when in the past, they used to have only about uh, maybe 100 or 200 people per day uh, to, to register, they, they didn't do anything to expand the process when uh, it comes to at the end, knowing fully well that many people will wait until the last minute uh, uh, to come and register. So I think, yeah, one of the reasons why or INEC was overwhelmed was because it's when they uh, think that the whole process should continue as it was before without trying to take uh, provide certain contingency measures in order to expand uh, the process so that uh, more people could be uh, registered uh, within two or three days of the exercise to close. All right. Looking at, uh, have, have, having said that, it seems the agency uh, uh, wasn't really ready for the surge of voters coming, of uh, prospective voters coming out to get registered. Um, should we therefore not understand the reason INA gives for not being able to continue with this exercise. I mean, Fesus Okoye has said several times, he's the, uh, uh, the national, um, uh, he's the head of voter information and voter education with INEC, uh, sort of a spokesman for INEC. He said several times that INEC needs time to clean up, in his words, the voter register and to compile the register to get uh, other things ready for the election, to print the cards, which they say will be ready by uh, 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 October or November, that's about uh, three months before the election. So looking at this overwhelming turnout of people, is it therefore not understandable that INEC would need time to prepare adequately to attend to these people when the elections uh, hold? Yeah, I think uh, they need time because that is what the law says, that uh, the, the whole process should be 
concluded at least uh, 90 days before election so that, you know, you allow people to go and check and uh, cross-check their names and find out whether they, it is wrong or where any kind of problem so that it can be addressed. But uh, here, I think INA2 should be blamed yeah, because uh, they shouldn't have wait uh, to finish one process before they start another. Okay, since they say it is an ongoing process, I think they could have been doing multiple tax uh, at the same time. Like as people are registering, yeah, you know, they, those who are ready, their card will be printed, and then the lists, you know, will be displayed. Uh, so far in this month, like on a monthly basis, that uh, centers, you can now come up with the list and, and uh, put it. In other words, they need more stuff. They need, uh, you know, by, by the process to be, you know, not just one dimensional, but they, they, they take a lot of uh, activities at the same time. Because if they allow it now, uh, as they did or as they have done now, that is why at the end of it, they will be overwhelmed. That is why even uh, in uh, November or September or November or whatever, you know, when the October or uh, rather November, when the list, uh, when everything will be ready, there will be crisis because they will end up with uh, so many complaints. Now, some people uh, registered more, some, you know, uh, uh, did it uh, wrongly. There, there could be spelling, there could be a lot of problems. And at the end of it, INEC will have uh, lots of problems at, uh, in its own hand, uh, trying to solve this problem of registration, and at the same time, try to prepare for the election. So I think we shouldn't always wait until the last minute to do it, uh, to do things. Uh, that is why I think uh, INEC is in this problem uh, that it is facing now. Interesting that you've talked about, you know, waiting to the last minute because uh, I'm I've been monitoring the live, you know, comments of uh, some Nigerians out there online. Uh, their their re response, reaction as this exercise has come to an end, a lot of blame, you know, complaints coming out um, as regards uh, those who are were unable to get registered, you know, blaming INEC. But you're saying that the uh, bulk of it, are you saying the bulk of the the responsibility lies on the people who should have come out uh, early enough to get registered rather than wait till the last minute to get registered. Is that what you're saying? No, no. What I'm saying is uh, you can share the responsibility equally between the people and the INE. You know, some of us are, are uh, reluctant to do things on time. Also, that is why many people... Uh, you know, had waited uh, until the last minute. So that is their own problem. And the other part of the problem is, like I said, INEC hasn't, um, you know, tried to plan in such a way that uh, they don't have to wait for one event uh, activity to finish before they go to another thing. Because this is something that uh, uh, nobody imposes on, uh, on INEC. They are the one who set out the uh, the process, so I think they should have widened the scope of the process. So that is why I say we can share the blame, not necessarily 50-50, but uh, yes, we can give INEC about uh, maybe 60 percent of the problem, and then uh, perhaps 40 to uh, the people who uh, stayed behind until the last minute. All right. This, this continued voter registration started on the 28th of June, uh, 2021, more than one year. Prof. Oh, oh yes. You see, it is going, it's going to continue. Even after the election, they will uh, open it and continue because uh, you, you can't say you have finished uh, the whole exercise. After all, uh, every day and, uh, you know, uh, by the hour, people reach the age of uh, voting. So you can't disenfranchise them uh, and say until uh, a certain uh, period. So it's going to be continued. But what makes it, uh, you know, a, a challenging now is because uh, the elections are at hand. They are very near. And uh, people now are trying to see that uh, perhaps uh, they, they, they have to participate uh, for one reason or another. You know, that is why people are rushing. 
If you look at it, most of the people who are in the queue are older than 18, which means they have not done it before, but for political reason or for one reason or another, the thing now they have to get. So I think uh, uh, this should continue. We, we, of course, uh, we cannot say just because it is one year, it is a, almost a one year process, then INEC should not be blamed. I think uh, to me, like I said, uh, INEC will be blamed or should be blamed for being just, uh, you know, too slow in the process because they think uh, we have to, like I keep on repeating myself, they think they have to finish one tax and then go to another. Instead, when they call it continuous voter process, they, they should have it. They should have all this mechanism by which, even if it is on a monthly basis, that they will be releasing the new registrant. And of course, the other blame that we have uh, which I think we are silent in, in this discussion, is the fact that uh, uh, INEC is complaining that the cards that are ready, about 60% of them, people have not collected uh, the card. So that chopped up the process. So that is why I say we blame the both sides. Mm. Interesting. Um, uh, one of the measures, INEC, apart from extending the, the date, uh, the deadline, rather, for the suspension of the CVR. They also extended um, the registration time, the closing hours, by two hours. You know, so instead of closing by um, uh, by 3 p.m., you know, they close by 5 p.m. to allow as many people as possible to register. But, of course, you've talked about how slow the process has been. But, but Prof, looking at the, the turnout, you know, um, massive turnout in different parts of the country, northeast, northwest, uh, you know, as far as, um, you know, even Kaduna State, Kano State, uh, these are parts of the northwestern part of the country. You have a massive turnout. In Kaduna State, for instance, uh, the, the state government declared work-free days. Uh, in Kano State, the state government, I'm sure you're aware, also embarked on a, a grassroots, um, according to the Commissioner for Information in Kano State, Mala Muhammad Garba, uh, he said the state government did a lot of um, grassroots mobilization to sensitize its residents to participate in the ongoing exercise. In Lagos State, there were work-free days in other states in the Southwest as well. Uh, is this why you're seeing a lot of people come out uh, to get registered or are there other re far-reaching uh, reasons why you know, people came out in more numbers than usual to get registered? I think that is part of the reason. Uh, there was last minute uh, move to mobilize uh, the, uh, the electorate, the potential electorate, so it contributed to that. But uh, I think the major reason is the coloration that our politics is taking uh, a shape. Um, you know, you, you can see the surge after the primaries, and now because uh, we are in one way or another try to define issues um, and political issues in terms of religion and in terms of ethnicity and in terms of uh, region. And so that is why you see, um, you will see the surge in areas where they have, uh, uh, you know, candidates. Uh, many people think that now we, it's our own time. So that is why they are coming. And that is why even in Lagos, you, you have the problem that we mentioned earlier on. People think that uh, there are certain group, non-indigenous, who may not likely uh, get along with where uh, our candidate is. So that is why you have this problem. So I think um, a lot of factors account for uh, the last uh, surge, uh, last minute surge of uh, uh, people to register. I've looked at some of the, um, the the reports coming from the different local government areas across the states. In some states, you don't have people going to get registered. In some states, you have just two per day, one per day, some four per day, some five, some ten. In some local government areas, the entire local government areas. So some could also argue that, um, you know, apart from the major centers like Kano, like Lagos, Port Harcourt, in some local governments in River State, for instance, I can give you the figures uh, from River State, you've had um, relatively low, low, low turnout, you know, and um, some would say this is a, 
uh, one of the reasons why INEC should not continue in order to waste um, uh, their time, uh, you know, registering the people. So, so you look at, um, uh, you know, last week, uh, I think, you know, Ogubolo local government area in River City, there's a case study. You had in some, on some days four. Uh, the previous week before last week, two weeks ago, on a particular day, there was nobody, you know. But this week, this week, you are seeing people come out in their hundreds in local government areas where you had zero, you had four, you had 10. You're seeing 50. You're seeing um, uh, 100. Uh, I mean, so will this ever end? You know, will this ever end? Prop. Maybe, maybe we can argue that um, Anik had given people ample time and in some places they weren't really ready to come out uh, to get registered. So what are your thoughts on, on the fact that in some far-flung local government areas, people weren't really coming out? I think, I think um, yes, INEC has given uh, ample time for people to do. But uh, like I said earlier on, the problem is that there was no, uh, you know, uh, proper mobilization of uh, the, the voters until the last minute. So that is why we are having the problem at uh, last minute. Uh, this thing should have uh, been going on uh, for, you know, since the time we opened the, INEC opened the exercise, INEC should have taken the measure. But most importantly, I think the, the, the political elite should have uh, taken the trouble to mobilize the, the, the people earlier on, so that at least, even if you say, uh, you know, a, a day you get 100 or 200 per place, people come at their own leisure time or at their free time you know, that uh, they can spare and go and do it and uh, wait until it's, uh, it's ready to go and collect it. But of course, we, we just sit down and uh, we didn't do anything until the last minute. So that is why we have it. And that is why, even if you can make it. Uh, 10 years exercise, okay, uh, will have the same poor turnout in as much as um, there is no effort to mobilize the people to come out and register. All right. You've given us um, your thoughts on uh, the reasons why people have turned out in large numbers across the country uh, in major centers. Um, you know, let's look at the, the, the disparity in figures between the northern part of the country and the southern part of the country. Um, last we checked, the majority of eligible uh, voters from northern Nigeria in states in the northern part of the country, sorry, appear lethargic about the exercise. Uh, if you look at the figures, you know, uh, if you look at the size of the population, all right, commensurate with the population, more northern states perform poorer than their southern counterparts in the latest figures. And these southern states um, also have a, a lower population when compared, compared to the northern part of the country. So it would be expected. They use the word lethargy there. It's because of the, the difference in population. It would be expected that maybe you know, the more populated north, northern night part of the country or northern states would have a higher turnout uh, compared to the less populated southern states in Nigeria. I think um, it's more of political apathy. Or rather, we, we say it's more of a uh, voters' uh, protest. You see, many people here in the North feel that um, there are so many issues which uh, the government does not take uh, pay squarely. So it's a kind of protest. Why That is why many people, when you talk to them, they will say they will not participate into, in the process because they are not happy with what is happening. That is one reason. Another reason that uh, may account of the, the differences now is in the issue of who is coming for what. Okay, uh, the areas uh, that are now surging or coming out in mass to register, I uh, feel that it is their own turn uh, to do it. I mean, uh, so that is why they, they have to register in order at least to make sure that uh, theirs capture the power uh, to do, uh, so that it shifts to their own uh, place. So this is why you see there is that uh, much difference. For example, in the south, uh, southwest, 
now, uh, since they, 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 they are more or less, they have their own candidate coming. So they, they, they wanted to give him mass support in order to make him. The same thing, uh, you see, if you go to South East, especially those who are now campaigning for uh, LP, now they are coming uh, wherever they are, supporters uh, of uh, the, the LP party in their own place and in the, any place where they are residing. So that is why you see the difference. Because many people say, feel that uh, here in the North, like, uh, they don't have any stake at it. After all, uh, they, they have been facing problems of uh, insecurity, problems of poverty, hunger, unemployment, uh, which some of them are national, but some are more peculiar in, in the North now, like the issue of security. So uh, that is why many people are reluctant to, to come. I spoke to a lot of them, you know, and um, many of them, is indicated that their reason for not doing it is because they are not happy, they are dissatisfied with the performance of the government. Hmm. All right, this is a quite interesting uh, uh, analysis from you, uh, Professor uh, Sunny Fage. I'm afraid we have to uh, bring it to an end at this uh, juncture, but I want to thank you uh, very much for your time. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Uh, Professor Asa Sagi is a public affairs analyst, uh, guest on a first uh, discussion right here on Breakfast. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we talk human trafficking with the uh, Nigerian anti-human trafficking watchdog telling football agents they need clearance certificates to take footballers abroad. We'll talk about that on the other side.